Hello Kingsmen and welcome back to another NTW3 guide. Today we are going to be talking about a little more specifics when it comes to NTW3 Napoleonic Total War 3, uh, which is for Napoleon Total War. Um, if you have not seen my other videos first on how to install the mod and also just the basic differences between the mod in vanilla Napoleon Total War, um, I will link them in the description of this video. You guys can go check those out. Um, if you've come this far and you're ready to play this game, but you want a little extra advice, um, hopefully I can provide some of that for you. Now, of course, disclaimer, all of this information I'm giving you is... Um, it's, it's people's opinions, my opinion, and several other uh, experienced um, Napoleonic Total War 3 players um, always can be, you know, you can take what you want from it, and hopefully it will help you. Um, there'll be plenty of people I'm sure that you will meet along the way that can uh, give you really good advice, but today, what we're going to be talking about is, uh, we're going to be talking about the points of your factions, we're dealing with factions today, so builds, NGW3 builds, so we're going to be talking about the points. Um, the symbols in your uh, different armies, what those mean. And of course, we're going to be talking about a couple of the beginner friendly factions for if you're just starting Napoleon Total War 3 and you want to not get just squashed, you don't want a super difficult faction to play. I'm going to list out a couple of the easier factions and kind of just spec, just kind of say specifically if they're more, you know. Uh, supportive, if they're more uh, standalone, you know, if they have a infantry focus, cav focus, militia focus. So um, let's kind of jump into it, guys. So the first thing we're going to be talking about is the points. Now, um, this is something I did not know. You see all the number points along here, um, quite a few of them. You can see 12 all the way to 1, which is Lords and Patreons. Don't play that if you're being seriously wanting to play. But it goes all the way to 3, you can see. And this is Customs now. But uh, Customs, and then you have Cores over here. Cores, I'm going to just do in a totally different video. Um, cores are specialty armies for different time periods, and obviously generals for that time period. A lot of fun. I love playing Cores, but we're focusing on only this. And, of course, for the... Uh, other side lights too with the coalition you can see the custom armies are right here they go anywhere from 10 all the way to uh five so so what these points are is usually for a battle like a it kind of dictates the power of that faction and uh how you can bring them so say someone for like a 4v4 someone says 37 points or 38 points or you know if they're feeling crazy 42 or something like that and that's just the total point so you could have someone bring a six point you know you could have someone bring you know a 10 point uh france and you know you add those up you know it's just etc you know someone could bring a 12 point france all that's kind of crazy to ring uh you wouldn't want to do that uh, but you know it just dictates the power of that faction and the same for the coalition here um but that's kind of how you would dictate a battle so usually if you get an nw3 battle you ask for points they will tell you immediately what the points are and uh, you can kind of talk to your team figure out who's going to bring the more powerful factions you know who's going to bring a 10 pointer who's going to bring the 8 pointer who's going to bring the 11 pointer you know 9 pointer or whatever um the symbols now we're talking about symbols to the armies if you hold your mouse over one of these factions you see a square next to the russia that means they can square and uh, not all the units can square you see some of these russian troops they have no square around their next to the left of the name. Of course, the UK, almost all of them will build a square. And squareable units is obviously super important um, against cavalry. A lot of the uh, bigger factions like Prussia and uh, Austria and HRE, you can see they don't have a lot of squareables. You see they'll be here. And even on the battlefield, when you're playing a battle, uh, you can look at the enemy and uh, see, you know, oh, this usually forms a square and this one doesn't so you can look for a weak point in the line like you see this uh, Voltier doesn't but uh, these guys do it's an important thing to look for and uh, along with that you have speed you see there's a G or next to the elite infantry part I'm gonna kind of have to edit put a little squiggly thing in the line to show you there's like a G4 you have L3 L5 um, L4 um, so the L is for line infantry, you can see C is for cav, um, H is for uh, artillery, and uh, G is for general, I do believe, you see here. And of course, S is for skirms. That just says how fast they are. So for instance, your lights, like your cav, they're gonna be a C7, they're pretty fast. So if you see someone coming at you and they have, you know, say a C6 and you have a C8, 
uh, you're gonna be able to run them. And also, that's why it's important when you look at the C4 as your heavy cav. Um, you can outrun them if you're running away with lighter cav, or you can get away from them. So always looking at the battlefield, seeing what they are, uh, their speed is. You can see, obviously, with a more big army like this, there's a lot more uh, L2s. And even with the militia, you have L2, L1s. So really slow-moving, lumbering units. Something to look at, of course, you also have, um, along with that... You also have um, Inspires, Shock, Intimidate, some units. Imperial Guard is a perfect example of this. Um, when I pulled it over, you can see they have abilities. They have a Square, Inspire, Stamina, Shock, Resist. So they can do all that to a line. So say you're forming up, that's why Imperial Faction is so good. Or the, uh, sorry, Imperial Guard is such a good faction for backing up, say, you know, a Denmark faction that brings a ton of line infantry. You can, um, you know, Really back up the stamina, inspire the units to hold um, for longer. So that's something to look at. You always want to bring at least some grenadiers or some elites because they are going to help back up your line, especially when you're playing, playing someone like Russia, Prussia. Um, they can bring you know a couple of these elites that have inspires and have a shock resist. So say they get hit really hard and they lose a lot of troops at once. Um, they Their shock resist will resist the initial, obviously, self-explanatory shock of losing a bunch of troops because some units they're just off over that i think actually some of the cossacks some of the lancers you see they have a shock resist which not all cav does um these guys don't they just have stamina so uh that's something to look at when you're picking your armies as well and uh intimidate and inspire obviously you have your generals which can inspire you have your combat gens that have inspires um they may not be able to pop a you know a uh What's the word I'm looking for? Like a rally or inspire unit like a general can, but they being just in an area, they have that circle around them. Just being in that area, they can really boost the morale of your units and keep them in the fight. Um, that's why you want them in the back lines. You don't want them in combat unless you really need them to be. They are good, and Cav obviously has them as well. You have even generals, I do believe. There's general has, yeah, you have a uh, artillery that can also inspire. Um, so they always have these, and the stars obviously equal a morale each. So Napoleon obviously has a ton of stars, a lot of extra morale on top of, you know, the 16, so 16 morale for this unit, plus all the stars, you know, for the Imperial Guard, they can stand forever. That's why they will lose tons before they actually die. Um, so that's, that's about it guys for that portion. Those are the things when you're doing your loadout, um, you can, you can do whatever you want with these loadouts. Obviously some are going to work better, but you usually want combat gens. Um, you want units in the back lines to inspire your men, have that shock resistance even with cavalry. You want to make sure to bring a good mixture of heavies, C4s, C1s, C3s, whatever it is. And then of course your Dragoons, which are like usually a C, C5, I think at the most, C6. Yeah, C5 and C6. And then of course you have your C8 and 7s, which, you know, can be used to run around the flank. So, alright guys, so now let's get into... The beginner friendly factions so like i was saying before i'm gonna go over each one um, i'm gonna start with the balanced focus faction so the, one of the first ones that people have recommended to me for beginner players is austria now disclaimer with austria if you can notice if you look here there are a lot of units you can bring you can bring some very massive armies um, very large armies a lot of troops a lot of cav um, a lot of line infantry it can be a lot for a first timer a lot of multitasking and uh, it can be a little daunting. So if you feel up to the task multitasking and you really want to play Austria, I always encourage people to play what you want to play, you know? Play that faction that you really want. For me, it was the UK, which have their own set of difficulties. And I will never tell someone not to just because it's a bigger army or take a lower pointer because you're new. Because, I mean, you know, it's a game, you know? You're supposed to enjoy it. But Austria is a standalone faction. They can support themselves. Um, they have good rounded heavy cuirassiers they have really some good dragoons they have hussars chevaliers lancers they have some good sets of artillery and then they have some good grenadiers in line infantry uh, obviously they don't have a lot of squares so the one thing you have to watch out with austria is a morale shock um with cav hitting you really hard with some line infantry you can also see some of their cheaper line infantry has some terrible morale i mean if you compare that with you know even just a basic um I'm not going to do the Imperial Guard because they have the crazy. Just a basic other line of infantry. See, they almost all of them have eight, seven, you know, four. 
they, they have some pretty good morale compared to Austria, which, you know, they get into the threes and twos. I mean, they have some decent morale here, but it's really expensive units. It's, I love their lights for Austria. They can bring a lot of good Chevaliers and Hussars and Lancers. So, uh, the next one that's more of a balanced faction when it comes to cab, infantry, artillery, skirms, and all that would be uh, France, Spain, which you can see they also can bring a lot of uh, artillery, a lot of cab. In a lot of elites, grens, light infantry, skirmishers, line infantry, and uh, it's a very good balanced faction. Now this one is also a standalone faction. They can fight on their own. They don't need the support of uh, another faction or they don't need to be support to another faction. Um, they have a good rounded amount. Now most of their infantry are pretty decently large units. You see 150s for their units. And uh, their morale is pretty decent. Um, they have 8s and 10s and some 13s. They have some good skirmishers. They have expensive cuirassiers. Actually, not super expensive. Um, it's a good, well-rounded army. So if you're newer and you want to try France, which most people do, this is a good army to consider. Um, they have some really fun grenadiers in combat gens. Their general, obviously, is Lons. Or you can bring Salt. Um, there's a couple generals you can bring. Remember, the stars do matter. You can bring Suchet, Salt, um, Lons, the Brave. But uh, another good standalone faction. Now, the other one that you would want to uh, consider as a brand new is the Imperial Guard. Now, they are a support faction, I would say. Now, they have been used, I've seen them used effectively as a standalone faction. But I would consider them more of a, a support because of their inspires that most of the units can do. I mean, almost all the units have inspires. They have amazing morale, but you can't bring a lot of them. I mean, you see how much each of these units usually costs is a lot. Um, they're Grenadiers, of course, but even their line infantry, it's, it's pretty expensive, especially when you start bringing the Cav. They can bring some heavies. The Grenadier Cheval are deadly. Um, 187 of them, now it's two grand gold, but some, I would say it's pretty worth it. They can bring only a few units, so that's why I say they're more of a support faction, especially if you're a newer player, you're going to be easily squashed by superior firepower if you're not careful. Um, but yeah, they're a really good one for uh, that. Now another one that is a standalone is Sardinia, Sardinia uh, Pumont. Um, they can bring only a couple artillery, they can bring some uh, heavier calves, some more dragoons, and then some lights, and they can bring a good rounded amount of infantry. Um, in fact, their infantry is a lot more cheaper, so you can bring a lot more of it, kind of like a Bavaria. Um, but they can bring lights, grenadiers, they, they can bring a good range of infantry and some skirms as well, and militia. Now, not a lot of militia, but these guys can be used as cannon fodder or rifle musket fodder, whatever you like to consider. They have some good combat gens here. Um, so another one that has a balanced focus, has an equal cannon, cav, infantry focus that uh, you may want to consider bringing. Now, another one um, on the coalition side now is uh, Prussia 9, which I have actually really, really loved this faction. Prussia 9 is a lot of fun to play, more than Prussia 10 in my opinion. Um, it is a definitely standalone faction. You do have to be wary because your morale is not the greatest. You have to double stack your units to buffer the morale, but they can stand in a line fight forever. In fact, a lot of people will bring a ton of land work, and you can put units behind units. You can get, you know, a couple elites, elite units or the combat gens with some extra morale. You can obviously bring, you know, some better generals. And uh, in a standing line fight, they will do well. They also have a good range of artillery, a good range of heavies, dragoons, um, the totem comps are to die for, in my opinion. I love the totem comps. Very effective hussars. They can bring some Ulanen. And uh, some would say that a lot of Ulanen, land where Ulanen, actually is a very effective strategy because you just multitask the enemy into the ground if you bring a ton of these cheaper units. Now, if you're a newer player, that may be more difficult for you. Um, you can always opt for a more heavier build, but that, that's the thing is there's so many different builds you can do from this. And there'll be plenty of people hopefully that you will be able to play with that will give you some amazing builds. So, so the next we're going to be focusing on, guys, is the infantry, line infantry focus. So the line infantry focus, where line infantry are the more important part of your build here. And the first one we're starting with is Bavaria. They can bring some good artillery. They can bring some good cav. Uh, the cav's not the greatest. They can, of course, you can bring the guard decor, which is an amazing heavy cuirassier unit. Um, you can see their cav roster is not as big, but their line infantry is extremely cheap. Um, of course, it has some terrible morale, you have to consider that, and not very many squareables you can see. Um, there's only a couple squareables, they have some lights that can, light infantry that can form square, but you see 101 
um, 114, 200 gold. I mean, you can bring a massive amount of infantry um, with some of the skirmishers and militia and a combat gen, maybe one or two grens. And you can just, I have used a massive infantry spam to just totally multitask the enemy into the ground. Um, now, of course, they can be used as a standalone faction. They are easily can be. You just have to be defensive with your cav usually. And just use your infantry to throw the weight in. These guys are 160, 170 man units. It's not going to be that easy unless you're already in a standing line fight and have taken some losses. It's not going to be easy for cav to just route your men. Is They're just such a mass of them that it's going to be difficult for anyone to uh, just mass break them with their morale. Especially if you have double stacked lines, which you can with such a mass, and bring combat gen, good general, and keep your units nearby. So the next one we're going to talk about, guys, is Atlantic Street Focus, is Denmark. And I would consider them as more of a support faction. Um, they can, of course, be used, well, if you're an experienced player, but we're talking about brand new players. So players that are new to the game, Denmark is definitely one of those nations that you'd want to uh, have supporting someone else. You have an amazing set of elites and grenadiers. Um, you can bring a lot of grenadiers and your line infantry even is, I think, decent in melee. Um, as you can see compared to the melee defense and attack of some of the Prussian units, um, they have some good attack and defense especially with their Grens. I mean, those guys are potent and they're not as expensive as some of the Grenadiers and elites of other factions. So that's one thing to consider if you need someone from melee, even in a standing line fight. Um, but if you're newer, you know, bring a lot more of the Grens and elites. Uh, they have some good skirmishers and they have good line infantry, but they definitely are line infantry focused army for the most part. Their cab is not the greatest. They don't have a lot of heavies or dragoons or lights, you can see. Um, and their artillery is decent, but um, that's it for at least someone with Denmark to consider. Now, another line infantry focus is the Swiss. Now, the Swiss are a five-pointer. They are a lower point, um, but don't let that fool you. If you see the Swiss coming towards you, you know you got to know that they are bringing some really good line infantry, and you can see how massive these units are. 250, 240, 372. So they actually, for having such a small roster, their units bring so much, and they can hold for a very long time. Just because of the shock of losing a lot of men isn't going to really, you know, they can lose 30, 40 men and still not even be at two-thirds, they could be over two-thirds strength. Their cav is not that big. They obviously have some dragoons um, and then some light cav. Artillery is pretty scarce, but the line of infantry side, just with the massive units they can bring, uh, makes them a very good support the faction, especially as a new player. So uh, if you're going to play as them, definitely try to stick with your ally. Try to help them. Uh, you can shift places with them and take up a corner of the map, even or a side of the uh, flank, and easily push with such massive units firing. Now, another one that I actually tried when I first started uh, was Italy, and uh, at least a seven pointer. And it is uh, definitely a uh, support role. They don't have a lot of cav, their cav is very expensive. The dragoons. Italy's cav is more just kind of to be defensive with their army. You can't be really aggressive with the cavalry because you don't have a lot of it. It's expensive and it's not the greatest. Some of their dragoons are definitely really good. The guard dragoons, they have some nasty guard horse artillery that you can bring. That's amazing. Um, does really well. They have some uh, definitely really good infantry. They have a lot of the really, really good grenadiers and line infantry and uh, elites. Um, some decent light infantry as well. But a definitely line infantry, uh, a infantry focus definitely for Italy, I would say. And uh, you definitely want to be supporting, as a new player, supporting someone else with that. Now, another seven pointer on the coalition side here is uh, Portugal. Now, Portugal is definitely a line infantry focus. Um, their cav is not much to speak of. You should be very cautious when using it because it is not that good. Um, it really isn't. You need to support someone else. I would say they're definitely a support pack just because of how low their cav is. Now, there's something beautiful you can bring. And I love eight pounders. If you see my videos, you know I love my eight and nine pounders. Um, these things, you can bring two of these and uh, their range and everything. It's just, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. They're decently fast. They're F3s. Um, you know, very, very fast moving. Like I said, the cav is defensive, but their infantry, especially their light infantry, these guys are deadly now of course they are like the uk their range is 65 versus the average of 70 for most units um but they have really good accuracy you can see 29 28 um and they're uh where is it 
Yeah, so they, they just have really good uh, stats when it comes to sitting and firing. Now, of course, they are bigger units than the UK brings. UK, that's a downfall for the UK. They have small units for the most part. Most of the factions do. These have, you see, the line of tree has 130, 150, 180. Um, of course, these skirm, these line of tree are slightly smaller, but still really good. You want to bring as many of these as possible, in my opinion. Um, not as many Garens and not as many Elites. So they're not a melee faction as much as they are a standing shooting. So definitely a line of tree focus and definitely support your ally. Now a 9 port on the Coalition side, um, that is another line of tree focus, that is a support faction as a new player, would be Sweden. Um, Sweden has some cav they can bring, they can bring some of the Cressiers, Lifeguard, you know, they can bring some heavies, not a lot of them, bring some Dragoons, Lights, their line of tree is where they excel, they can bring some artillery, an 18 pounder actually, it's very nasty, but very slow, so just keep that in mind, you're going to be stuck hauling it all the way across the battlefield, unless you're being attacked directly, and don't have to move to advance, it's not usually worth bringing. Um, they can bring a lot of line infantry, and these guys have some decent stats, they have decent size. Um, they can bring a lot of grenadiers, only two in fact, and then the elites, they only have four, and they're expensive. So you just have to consider that. Um, bring a good amount of skirms, but like I said, their line infantry is a huge roster, and uh, has some decent morale stats. But you can bring a good amount of it, so uh, definitely... Definitely use your line infantry support, have your ally ha who has a heavier cav focus going with you, that way you don't get smacked. Now, of course, Sweden can form a lot of squares, as you can see, they're like UK, they can form a lot, so that's one defense they have against enemy cav, where their cav may not be as dominant on the field of battle. Now, another coalition, this is an 8-point UK, England, or UK, yeah, the UK, so you see there's several UKs, I would say in Egypt. Egypt is a good support faction, they don't have a lot of cav, they have a lot of their dragoons, and you'll notice the UK there will be a theme there. A lot of them can't bring uh, heavies, but their their lights are really good. Um, really, really good. You just gotta be careful because they will still not hold up well in a massive cav fight. Uh, their support faction because of that. Their line infantry though is pretty good, you can see they bring quite a bit of it. Um, the Gordon um, Footwatch, Blackwatch, and the uh, Highland infantry elites and Grens are really good to bring. Coldstream Guards, um, of course they're light infantry, the Green Rascals, oh no, they, this is not the Green Rascals side, I'm bad. Oh, but they can bring some really good line infantry here. Um, actually, for the UK, these are really massively large units, 130, 160, 170. So if you're going to try UK, I would recommend Egypt UK. They can bring a couple line infantry, cheaper line infantry like the Bombay Native infantry. Um, they can bring some decent skirms that have really good range, 150, 125. But just because you're weak cav, I would recommend staying as support and not rambling off on your own. So now another, this is a nine pointer for the coalition. It's Russia Suvorov. Now, this is a very fun faction. I've actually not really gotten to play, um, but this is a support faction. Although some people would debate if it's a standalone faction. I would say if you're a new player, play him as a support faction. You don't have a lot of cav. You have some good uh, um, Kazaki Lancers who have a shock resistance, and then you have some cav, but you don't have a lot of heavies. In fact, I don't think you have any heavies. Uh, you have some good amount of artillery, two howitzers, and a six and 12 banner to choose from. Your cav is what's going to make me say more of a support faction as a newer player. Um, you have really good grenadiers, and you have a lot of grenadiers to pick from, and then uh, some line infantry, but the ex excellent part about Suvorov is their grens. Um, I've seen some amazing battles where there was a lot of Grenadiers from Suvorov that were just rushing in. It was beautiful. They have some really good combat gens as well. Not a lot of squares, granted, but actually, no, they have a good amount of squares. So they can do well for not having a lot of cav support, um, which is why some people would say they are not a support faction. But as a new player, I will reiterate, I would say be a support faction. And in general, as a newer player, you want to be with your ally just so that you don't get totally destroyed by an experienced player who just surrounds and utterly defeats you because I know what that feels like. So next, we are talking about a militia focus. Now, people scoff at militia. I actually love militia builds. Um, They're a lot of fun, and uh, I have mentioned before that Prussia 9 has some really good militia. You can do really good militia builds. These units are really big. Some of them can even form square here, uh, and they're really cheap, but those are as big militia focuses as the Netherlands, which is a seven-pointer for the coalition. Um, they can bring some good heavies, as you can see, some good artillery, but where they excel is their militia. 
Um, they can bring a lot of it. This is all militia here. They have some line of tree you can bring as well. Uh, only a couple uh, lights. No, actually, they can bring a lot of lights. A couple grands. Not really any elites, as you can see. No real elite infantry, and they have a couple grands maybe to back up, maybe do some inspires. I think. No, they can't even. They just shock resist. So the militia masses. That's where it excels for the Netherlands. You can mass up tons and tons of uh, militia and just shoot the enemy to pieces. And you will take some losses, but it's militia, so it can it can last. Um, and if not, you just replace it with another militia unit. You know. And it, it actually can be a lot of fun. I would highly recommend it for anyone that wants to try that. Another militia focused is the UK. This is the USA UK. So the War of 1812 UK. And they have um, a good amount of artillery, some heavy cav, only one when I say some, um, and a lot of lights. They don't really excel as much in cav as they do. They have a lot of militia. You can see here a lot of the Newfoundland, Canadians, um, English and corporate. I mean, they, they have a lot of it. Now they do have some line infantry, of course, to back that up. They can form square. Um, these are some large units as well, so you can do a lot of militia and then do some, you know, elites and some grenadiers, maybe a couple line infantry to kind of back up this militia, but you can do a lot of uh, militia spam and just, um, like I said, just outshoot the enemy. And these are some 200, almost 300 men units. So uh, definitely play support. I would say anytime that you are playing a militia faction, you need to be supporting someone. You can be basically taking the brunt of the fight and having maybe, you know, Suvorov or someone with some really good grenadiers or some elites kind of backing your men up, keep them in the fight, keeping that morale up. As you can see, definitely the morale is, you know, the highest is six and the rest of it's like four or three. So uh, with all of these militia focused factions, you definitely want to have and your ally nearby. Now I've noticed all the coalition has the heavy militia spams or the heavy militia focused. And this is another coalition five pointer. This is Hanover. And you can see already, you can see why this is a militia focus. They have basically no cab. They have basically no artillery, a lot of line infantry, and they have a ton of militia. Uh, obviously this is 65 range militia. So you just gotta remember that the French could sneak up or any of that, the, uh, Imperials could sneak up and barely get range and volley. They're probably not going to kill a lot from that, but uh, you have to get a little closer. But in some really cheap Hanover militia, but a lot of it. And they, of course, like I said, they can only bring some very large units, but only three, I think, of the uh, Cav. And of course, you can bring like a combat gen as well, uh, or not. You can only bring three Cav. So definitely be support. Definitely don't go off on your own because a couple the Imperial Guard could roll over, you know, with some of their heavies or just France in general could roll over some heavies and just crush you. So uh, they can't really square. Actually, some of these can. Um, so some of them can, which is nice, especially with how many of them are militia. But definitely keep that in mind. Like I said, I was saying before, guys, I'm trying not to repeat myself. Militia is a lot of fun to play. It really is. It's very satisfying to play. So the last thing we're going to talk about with all of the beginner friendly factions focused is a uh, cav focus now cav is something i don't do very well at um but you get better the more you play it so don't get discouraged if you're doing awful with cav or someone's telling you don't play cav because you're you're terrible with it you know just keep playing it keep getting good at it you will learn you will get there eventually and the first one i'm going to talk about is an imperial side it's a nine point rhinebutt um they can bring some deadly especially this saxon cav so you can bring some really good heavies, guard decor, cuirassiers, guard cuirassiers. Uh, you can bring some, uh, you can see they actually have different nationalities. They have lancers, um, chasseurs, cheval, chevaliers, guard decor, a lot of guard decor, so, you know, some hussars. So they definitely are, Rheinbund, you gotta watch out. If you're going up against them, they will bring, probably bring in some really good cab. And I would consider them a standalone faction because their line infantry may not be the greatest, but it has some squareables and you can bring a good amount of it. Um, it can be pretty cheap, and they have the cab to defend it, and the artillery to back it up. So this is a standalone, Rheinbund is a standalone faction, and it's not a super high pointer, but it's not low point, it's a nine point. Um, so, standalone faction, Rheinbund, cab focus. Now to kind of combat Rheinbund, I would say, in some ways, Saxony on the coalition side, an eight pointer, but they can bring amazing cab. Obviously, Rheinbund, you saw a lot of their cab was Saxon cab. Um, and that would make sense then why Saxony would be also cab focused and have some really good cab. Um, they can bring a lot of heavies, or not a lot, but they can bring most of these heavies and most of these chevaliers. And then some hussars, their line infantry isn't the greatest. Um, it's musketeers, not the greatest morale. They can't really square very much, but they have the cab to kind of defend themselves. 
Um, I would say Saxony, I usually see them played as a se support role, and especially as a new player, you may want to play him as a support role. Uh, you use your heavy cab to go in and use your line of your musketeers as kind of a uh, backup or just like a small flank. You definitely want to go toe to toe with a faction unless you're more experienced um, with the cab. They can bring some good artillery as well, so um, you can play them as. You can't really, you can't really trust your infantry though. Um, infantry by itself isn't as trustworthy, especially as a newer player. You're not going to notice them being very trustworthy and holding a line fight very well. Poland, I know I already said, they are also a good cav focus. You cannot bring as much line infantry and bring a lot of cavalry. Um, you can bring, as you can see, a lot of lancers. I've seen Poland come just as lancers, just as cav. Let me couple grenadiers just to take some LOCs back up their artillery, but you can bring a lot of cavalry and make someone's day miserable. Now, and remember that this is just Lancers, so the initial charge is definitely the best part about these guys, and you still want to play them as a support role, but they can definitely be a huge cav-focused faction that you can uh, charge up and uh, do well at. So now, guys, we've talked about um, the recommended friendly faction, beginner friendly factions, which I hope you will try some of these. And there may be others that you may find that are a little easier for you. Like I said, this whole list that I made um, is just kind of more of an opinion. Granted, it's a good opinion. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, I hope this video in some way helps. <laughs> And uh, more videos to come out. I'm sorry for how long it took to get this one out, guys. I, You guys have all been really, really amazing in the support you've given to my past guide videos, my installation videos, and just my videos in general. So I'm going to try to get a little better at getting up some other guides. Um, I'm in no way pro at this, so it is... Uh, it, it takes it takes a little bit to kind of contemplate if I'm actually saying the right things and I may be totally wrong with some of the things I said in this video and I don't mind if you kind of say in the comments like hey I think this actually is technically this way you know um anything to help you know I I think more this is a gold mine this game was a gold mine and not everybody knows about it and it's a very daunting to start out playing it so um you just you know Dip your feet in the water or just plunge in and play some games. I mean, you can come to my Discord. Um, just, it's a very good community and it's a steep learning curve. But once you start catching on, it is so much fun to play. I don't think I'll ever get tired of this game. So um, that's about it, guys. Um, like I said before, I hope this helped. You guys uh, have a great rest of your day. Stay safe and uh, I'll catch you all, hopefully, on the Napoleonic Battlefield.